everyone. Welcome to the teaching segment of the 10 hour prayer marathon. And so we'll just say a prayer and then we'll listen to what the Lord has to say concerning the thing that was given to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your mighty hand upon us at the tribe and the king's arrow. Thank you even for your word that is coming to us even now. Lord, I ask that your word will come in freely, have a free course into the hearts of your people, into the hearts of the ones you love, oh God. And we will all receive that light that we have longed for at the end to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. So, so thankful for this opportunity. Every time we're giving a slot to say what's on our hearts that the Lord has given to us, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And so I'm grateful to the leadership um, of the tribe and, um, and to God also. My name is Mercy Ochibo Obe. And um, today we're looking at the theme for the 10 hours prayer marathon that says the heart of a servant, the heart of a servant. Now, this theme shows that, or the topic, however you may see it, it shows that it's referring to a personality, a person, a living being. A living being because um, we know that the heart is the major organ in the body, you know, that if it shuts down, if it stops beating, that's the end of that being, whether animal or human being, you know. Maybe other organs can still go on for maybe days, weeks, seconds, minutes, but the heart just shuts down and that person is gone. So um, my sister did a very beautiful job, you know, by um, the first teaching by 9 a.m. Nigerian time. And she, you know, gave an understanding to the meaning of the heart of a servant. Please let's look at that when the recording is out and also poured out what the Lord drops in her heart. God bless you, Madam Romina. May the Lord continue to honor you and let the anointing flow. So, what what I was saying is that this is about a person. And um, I would like us to now look at it from the origin of the created man, of the created being. And that will be from Genesis in the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 how did we come into being so verse 26 says then god said you can put it up madam victoria i'm always not ready to just in case the internet so i have it open but please put it up for some of us who will be looking you know at the screen genesis chapter 1 26 to 28 then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. So the, the first verse tells us, you know, a conversation that was going on amongst the Godhead. Now, the next verse now is telling us what he now did. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. So the origin of man or the origin of the, the created man 
shows that what we just read now shows that we cannot just exist we cannot just be created and then we are just looking at god saying oh god wow you made me so beautiful so wonderful no after god created man he gave a duty he gave a job description and that was to to what be fruitful and multiply the yet and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over everything that moves on it so that is work having dominion is work so every day every single day that we are existing we are channeling our energy let me not say we are we are supposed to channel our energy to serve this purpose because the truth is that we are all not doing that yet we are supposed to whether we are eating we are singing we are dancing we are going to our business doing anything we are supposed to serve this purpose and you know the beautiful thing to obey or to follow this job description obviously it's not it's not coming from a a an um how will I put it now? An inferior being to a superior being or a slave to a master. In your business place, in your office, let's say in an office setting, where you get an employment, what do you get? A job description. And it's not you that will tell yourself what you want to do, right? It's the, it's the employee, the employer that tells you what to do. So you are employed in that of organization as a worker as a servant you are going to serve the purpose of that office and this is where we, where we see that we were not just created to be kings to have dominion and all of that but we're actually created to serve the purpose of god and you know if we are not doing that, you will feel empty. You will feel void. You will feel unfulfilled. You will feel you have lost in on something and you keep chasing and chasing and chasing the business. You keep chasing the appointment. You keep having unrest, you know, until you remember who you are, who you were created to be and who and what your job description was in the first place because the bible tells us in ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 that yes god made everything beautiful he created everything beautiful and he has he will make it even more beautiful maybe the things that are not looking good in his own time in its time and guess what he has put eternity in their hearts oh, the bible says also he has put eternity in their hearts so you see that that eternity there is that it's a longing, it's it's a void that you cannot feel by yourself until you serve the purpose of God. If you want to look at it in the amplified version, um, that word eternity says a sense of divine purpose. He has also planted eternity. Now you know how they put it in amplified version. Is in the bracket, you put it as a sense of divine purpose in human in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Hallelujah. But yet man cannot comprehend it. So, what then should we be doing? You know, and I thought about it. Okay, is it so is it just to yeah i'm a king i'm a servant so i will have dominion the um, god is has given me the tools and i'll be serving his purpose and all of that and the Holy Spirit took me to verse 26 again of genesis chapter one that we we started with let's look at that verse 26 very well it says then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the eggs and over every creeping thing that creeps 
things on the earth. We will come to all of that. But do you see where he says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. That word according to our likeness is very important. In some versions, you will now see that there was there is an addition there. There's a no, not an addition, a conjunction, you know, word that joins sentences together. So um, let me look for that version. Okay. I think it's the amplified also, the amplified version. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You know, he now, it's now put in brackets, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. Then you see the word and let them have complete authority, you know, over the beds of the air, the fish in the sea and all of that. So I found out that the first reason, the first thing we should do as created beings, uh, as created servants who, who should be serving the purpose of God is to be in his likeness, to be in his image, according to his likeness, that is his spiritual personality. That is our first job to push on, to come so that we will be able to commune with him so that he will be able to have fellowship with him. That was what he was enjoying with Adam. You know, the Bible will say he will come down in the evening and, you know, come and talk with Adam, instruct him, discuss with him, have fellowship with him until you know what happened. The devil came and the rest is history. Man was deceived. And Eve was deceived. Let me not say man. <laughs> Eve was deceived. Adam followed suit, you know, and, you know, sin came into the world and there was a separation between God and man. So my point here, our point here is to tell you that the very first reason is to be like the Trinity, to be able to commune with him, even before having dominion, even before showing forth yourself that, yes, I'm a king, I'm taking charge, I am doing this, I am doing that, I'm also a servant who is equipped, you know, because as a servant who has been given a job description, you know, or a, a worker or a staff in an office, you are given a job description and you are given tools to carry out that job description, right? Yes, that's how it is. And that's what God did for us. So after telling us what to do, in the Bible, he, we find out that he has given us tools to carry out that that um, job description. And I'll just chip in there that <laughs> he gave us his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to do that. But that's not our focus today or for now. And if that is the case, to further buttress our point, is that when we see now the account of the Bible, you know, when when it is say, um, God finished creating this, 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 day four, day five. By the time we got to day five, he says, and it was good. God saw that it was good. Then after day six, where he created man and the animals that um, walk on the earth, the Bible records that he saw it was very good. It was very good. And that reminds us of that favorite scripture of mine. That reminds me rather of that scripture that I've come to love in Revelation chapter 1 verse 11 that says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created for your pleasure that is why god created man that is why god created me and you to give him pleasure and it is by his will that we are even still existing 
So now that is settled. Apart from having dominion, our first thing is to give God pleasure, to commune with Him. And so we should remember that following the theme of the 10 hours prayer marathon, we are called to serve his purpose. And that I, I love so much how um, during the Mount of Session for King's Hour, when the reckoning is out, whether you are a man or a woman, God created them male and female, right? Please get that recording and fire on, mount up, where Madam Amy said how as a servant, you know, you are not called to be just humble. You are not called to just, you know, love. You are also called to take dominion, to have dominion, to take back what the enemy must have taken. Giving the example of um, the scripture where Abraham trained his servants and they were able to go and rescue his nephew. Um, what's his name again? Lord. Amen. So we are, we are, we are not just servants and then you know when you hear the word servants you are already thinking oh um your head is bowed down you're walking your waist is not even straight your whole back is bowed that may be your position before god okay but not where he wants you to work and serve his purpose so every single day we are all moving in the direction we should actually be moving in the direction to please God, to be with him wherever he is. That is where we should be, to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the over the birds of the air and the, the, the animals that creep on the earth. And I hope we know, oh, let me not say I hope we know, of the cattle that walks on the earth and creeping things. These are not just animals that the Bible was talking about. And you can you may include animals as much as your faith can take it. But now looking at it from the spiritual aspect, the rulers of darkness, the powers that be in the air, on, on the land, under the waters, we are to have dominion. We are to have dominion. And the single reason why we have not come to that place as Christians, as marketplace ministers, is because many of us, many of us, lose that first part of having communion with him of being made in his likeness to be able to stay and be like him continuously if indeed we are created in his image therefore whether you decide to brush your teeth in the morning you decide to sleep you decide to take tea go to the business meeting or whatever go to the barber shop have a spa day whatever you do you must be serving this purpose and if you're not serving it i tell you you're still serving a purpose but you are not serving the purpose of the king of kings of elohim adonai you are serving the purpose of the destroyer of creation you cannot sit on the fence my brother you cannot sit on the fence my sister you cannot say hey i don't believe I believe in God, but you know, all these things, I'm not sure I want to go into it. If you like, be sure. If you like, don't be sure. Once you are not serving the purpose of God, you are serving the purpose of the devil. Because the Bible tells us that he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So you really don't have a choice. It's better you be on the winning side. It's better for you and I. What then? Paul is say, shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid in Romans chapter 6, verse 15 to 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Ah, sorry, this is King James, but you understand that whosoever I yield myself to obey, you know, I am the servant of that person. And if I decide I am no longer going to obey God for a minute, for a second, I walk in disobedience. In uh, our Nigerian pidgin language, we say, oh, your is your own, O-Y-O, on your own. 
I am on my own and that will give the serpent the ability to bite me. But God forbid, it is not our portion in Jesus' name. Because by the grace of God, I am trusting God that we all have an understanding that we are servants of God the king of kings and nothing should derail us from serving his purpose nothing so i should not yield to sin it's th- that that place is very important he says his servants whether so sorry verse 16 um b now says whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness don't you know this paul was telling the romans don't you know don't you know this? And so we are servants, just like the Bible has littered it for us. The examples we have, the fathers of faith in the Bible, from Genesis to the end, including Jesus, my Jesus and the, your Jesus, the one who loves us so much, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he is a servant when he came down on earth. The Bible says that he left everything. He made himself of no reputation. You don't have to go there, but it's in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. That he made himself of no reputation. He took on the form of a servant. I'm not actually going to say the form of a born servant and was made in the likeness of men. You know? And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I, there's no time to start mentioning everyone in the Old Testament, you know, and all of that. I'm picking Jesus and the apostles. We see um, Paul, I, God knows how many times he said, he's always referring to self, himself as a servant. He's always referring to himself as that. About, I know about four times in some of the gospels, in Romans, in Philippians, in Colossians, you know, in First Timothy, he will say, ah, Paul, the servant of the Lord. He will talk, talk, he will write, 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 and he will say, ah, the servant of the Lord. Even um, Jude, the apostle Jude, and, and that, that the Jude now, he shows that he, he was Jesus' half-brother. In Jude chapter 1, verse 1, he called himself a servant. And so I'm picking this too because I know some of us may say, okay, eh, uh, well, not, is it not the same Bible that says we are no longer servants, we are now sons? Like, oh, what are you saying? And you are correct. You are correct. You know, the argument should be eh, the Old Testament, they have, they did not, they were not um, there now in the dispensation of grace. That was so they were all servants. They were all, you know, in that servant position. They didn't, they didn't have that understanding. That is correct. In fact, the, the scripture says in Galatians chapter 4 verse 7 you don't have to go there man but if you want to that's fine Galatians chapter 4 verse 7 it says wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ you know this one is like okay so here it is what are you saying what are you saying but don't just just be calm because it also plagued me for a while and I asked and asked and asked. And the Lord showed us in the scripture, be at peace. Let not your hand be troubled. Eh? Let's look at this. Or let's look at it with a question. Okay? Would you have a son who would not obey you? Just think about it. You know, you have a son or a daughter. And you know, Quickly, when the Bible talks about son, it's not, you know, a male, um, a male child or something like that. It's, it's a, a, a term that is used for both male and female who have come into maturity in Christ. So you are a son to God or you have a son. I think we are, I was asking us the question. And this son knows that you are his father or you are his mother. When you tell him, oh, can you go and get this for me? Um, I'm going out, leaving, you leave instructions, you tell him what to do. We I say, uh, excuse me, mom, excuse me, dad, you know, I'm a son in this house, I'm not a servant, you know, I'll have to. No, he's going to do it. He's going to do it without even thinking twice. By the grace of God, that, that will be a kind son, a good son, everything excellent about that son. 
So it is okay for you to be a son and a servant. It is very okay. It is okay. But today we are looking at the posture, the heart of a servant. How should it even look like? But let me give us a scripture that will help us to know that it is okay. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 17, and you see, it's even in, in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3 verse 17. Please, you can go there, ma'am, Madam Victoria. It says, and they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels and I will spare them, now listen to this part. As a man spared his own son that severed him. So you are a son first. I am a son first. And then we, we serve God without even thinking twice. Without even thinking twice. Because we became sons from being slaves to sin. He came as a king that he is. Bringing forth victory. And took us out of darkness from being a slave into his marvelous life. And so we became sons and automatically, without even thinking twice, we want to please him, we want to do everything that will make him happy because the son loves so much. The son loves totally. A servant will also do that. Because when you think of <laughs> of where you are coming from, of what he saved you from, eh? you will know that I will love my master, this is my good master, all the days of my life. Because where I'm coming from is, is no, nowhere I want to go back to. And so before we go on, I, I want to, to, to release a word. As I was looking at this scripture, the verse before it, you know, sprung up to me. The verse before it, that's verse 16. Please listen attentively wherever you are. Verse 16 says, Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that taught upon his name. And so gathered here, we are all gathered here unto the Lord. We love him, we fear him, not fear of running away, but reverence. We give him that reverence. On, the, on this altar, the 10 hours marathon, from beginning to end, whenever you join, wherever you are listening to me now, just know that today a book of remembrance has been opened. And what his servants are saying, what you two have saying in the place of prayer as you are coming before the Lord on this 10 hours marathon is being written down, is being taken down and it is open for you because the significance of that, of this is that whatever is written, is written and by the power of God it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Amen so the caution here is that we should take note with all diligence, whatever is being said, whatever prayers are being taken, whenever you join joining, whenever you are listening to this recording or you are listening to me now, take diligence, be diligent as a servant of the Lord. Amen. Okay, now, so how does the heart of a servant look like? How must it be? First, okay, I will just briefly say um give a brief definition of a servant who a servant is it's a person who is being paid and taken care of by a superior being to oversee activity of other people manage an estate an establishment you know whatever it is a particular area a particular space this person this person who is a servant now gets jurisdiction over an estate or over a place, over the things he or she has been doing, you know, or over an individual after a period of active service, 
after a period of active service. So there are some words I want us to take note of. Our time is really running fast. Let's take note of number one, paid. Number two, taking care of. Number three, jurisdiction. And number four, active service. So a servant being paid and taken care of, what, 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 what does this remind us in the Bible? Because by the grace of God, I believe that <laughs> if not all of us, we know to an extent the scriptures that, that say these things, that give us promises and all of that. And so if indeed a servant is being paid, a servant is being taken care of, the scripture that came to mind is the scripture that says a laborer is worthy of his wage. Do not muzzle an ox. And we find that in 1 Timothy 5 verse 18. 1 Timothy 5 verse 18. That as you labor as a servant, as you work as a servant, you are worthy of your pay. You are worthy of the promises that God has littered in the Bible. So they have conditions. And as a servant, as you are meeting those conditions, you are to receive it. You are, it is your wage. It is, it is what comes with the package. That, now that phrase do not muzzle an ox you know it, it, it talks about covering the mouth of an ox while it's treading on the farm you know as it's working you know in those days i think they still have some country homes in in some you know um places where they still have a large expanse of land and farm and all of that when the ox is working the the ox is not supposed to starve so as you are a servant as you are laboring for the lord you are you are worthy to eat you are worthy to be taken care of another scripture that we love so much is that god is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and we see that in hebrews 11 verse 6. i'm just I'm paraphrasing that's not the whole of verse 6 but you know the the big part where is you know the the, the verse 6 tells us about how we have to have faith to please god and really, as a servant, you have to believe in your master now. You don't have a choice anyway. You have to believe that when your master tells you, gives you a job description that he's not telling, he's not sending you to his death, to your death rather. But you know that he will reward because you are diligently seeking his, his purpose. You are diligently seeking him. The other word is care. You know? Um, so we look at Psalm 18 verse 19 the Bible tells us in Psalm 18 verse 19 that he has also brought me out into a broad place he has brought me out he has brought you out to a broad place and he delivered me because he delights in me as a servant that is serving the purpose of God remember remember don't forget how we started the purpose of God is number one to do what to be in his likeness, to, to be like him, to stay with him, to fellowship with him, to have koinonia with him. Then before you are now, you know, able to start doing everything, taking dominion and all of that, that is your job description. So what will happen is that if for any reason, while you are working and you are doing the things he wants you to do, he and you get stuck or the, you are in an examination and the devil is testing you because God is so pleased with you. He was as a, come on, can you see my servant? You know, put your name there. Don't be afraid. Eh? The Bible says he will deliver. He will deliver you. Jurisdiction. The other word we said is jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, what is even the jurisdiction? It, 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 it signifies the power, you know, the right, the authority to interpret and apply the law. What law? The law governing the kingdom of the king of kings that sent you, of the Elohim king that sent you. Elohim is the creator king that sent you from his kingdom. So as a servant, you are, you are, you are armed Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? I think I lost internet. Yes. Yes, my can you hear me? We can hear you. Signify. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you can hear me. All right. My my internet just went off, so I had a backup plan just in case. All right. So you are as you are serving the purpose, you know, over time, you are giving more responsibility, right? You are giving more responsibility and more places to 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 look out for. So if you are looking at it in the eyes of the of the human realm, you are looking at it that you're getting a promotion. You are not just coming in as the staff or as the worker who came in as maybe the receptionist or you know the ground level staff. You are getting promoted. You are now managing um um other people you are managing estates and so you are you are, have the ability to interpret and apply that law the sovereign power of the most high god is with you you have that authority okay now the last word we're looking at is active service active service you are not a servant who will sleep today and wake up tomorrow i should not be that by the grace of God, this is uh, this is why we are we are laying down at the altar. That Lord, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to be, you know, that that servant that will work today and not work tomorrow. Get get the promotion and start sitting in the AC office, relaxing with the prosperity you've given me, and forget that I'm supposed to serve the purpose of Elohim Adonai. So you have to walk. I have to walk. A servant walks while it's yet day to finish the task before evening comes so that he will please his master, so that I will please my master. Yes, it's Jesus that said it, you know, that I walk the walk of him, of my father that called me, you know, while it's yet day. But remember, remember, it's okay to be a son and a servant, okay? So, we need to walk while there is still time. And I think this is a this is a word for somebody now in this season, in this month of June, that the Lord, it pleased the Lord to 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 open our eyes about restoration of time. And the Lord told me that there's somebody who will be listening to me, that you're already thinking. How am I going to get the time back? In fact, right now you are remembering how you knew right from an early start that God had called you, but the time was wasted in your university days, you know, where there was no, no much stress. You were not taking care of anybody. This was the time you would have spent praying and laboring, wasting away at the altar while studying your books. There was somebody, you know, your parents or your guardian was responsible for, 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 for taking care of you. And you're crying, God, would you restore? Would you restore? God says he's willing to restore. He's willing to restore the time you have wasted, you know. And he wants you to open your heart. Open your heart and let hope be alive. Let your faith arise again. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. So as a, as a servant, we have to stay active. Active. Then there are some things I want us to note. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There are some things I want us to know about the heart of the servant. Because that's where we, we are. We were when we now you know, gave a definition of who the servant is. And then we took note of some words, you know, we took note of the word paid, taking care of, care, and jurisdiction, and active service. Number one, the heart of a servant is a love organ. It's a love organ. So I have to watch what I like, what I like. You have to watch what you like. Because that's where it starts from. 
<laughs> if a servant should like something too much and that thing is not serving the purpose of Elohim, the creator that created him, the creator that created me, huh? the, my heart has the ability to begin to love it. No matter what it is, no matter who the person is, and God forbid that it is not serving his purpose. So if I now start liking attention, I start liking the praise of men, or I start liking the the, the little lies, you know, before you know it, my heart will love it and do it without thinking twice. And we know, we have learned severally that when you keep doing something, what happens? The spirit in charge of that behavior will jump on it and then it becomes a prayer project so the heart is a love organ what what i like what what you like if it's towards the creator please give it full force if it's towards his kingdom give it all you have you know why we say it's a love organ jesus said it himself in matthew chapter 22 you can please go there matthew 22 verse 37 where he says we should love the lord with words with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. The first thing is the heart. So it's a love organ. So be careful. Be careful. Number two, be humble. Be humble. Even as you are you are there getting the promotion, having more space, more people under you, being the manager of estate. You, you are using the, the gifts or the resources that you have been given as a servant. You need to remember to be humble because God resists the proud. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4 verse Can you hear me? Can you confirm if you can yes, hear we me? Yes, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. Okay. Now, okay. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Hear you now. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I should just switch to this one. <sighs> okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Where were we? All right. Yes, we're talking about being humble. Huh? Don't mind the devil. He wants to distract me. You have failed the name of Jesus. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so, if you want to look at that, imagine uh, my, uh, my sister, Madam Romina, did a beautiful job telling us about the heart and how it lives and all of that again listen to that so she said you know there are blood vessels that connect the heart to other parts of the body so imagine that for some reason if we are not humble as a servant god will resist us you know another word resist here you can think of it in this way restrict put a blockage if there is any blockage in your blood vessel, in the blood vessel that is bringing or taking away blood from the heart, what happens? You know what happens. That is already a sign of death. So you may still be a servant. You are, you are still doing all that. If you are not humble, God will resist you. And he's resisting you. He's resisting you. You are not listening. He will restrict you. And then what happens? When there's no blood in the heart, you are gone. I am gone. So it is very important. It is very important to submit to the King of Kings at all times. The next thing we should note or about the posture of the heart of a servant is that we should be ready. Eh? Be ready to be despised. Be ready to be trampled upon. Eh? <laughs> You are being despised, you are being trampled upon, but you are not forgetting who you are. You know that it is to serve the purpose of the Lord. Just go on, move on. Because Jesus, we, we remember that we gave the example that Jesus, in fact, is the, one of the, the most perfect examples of 
being a servant he was a servant he was a king he 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 left all that came down and can you imagine i didn't get i i but i know it's in the episode of john or one of the um um episodes of the of the gospel matthew mark uh look of john and john that as jesus was going about his ministry the same john who baptized him the same john who is his cousin right he's really the, you know was in prison and sent people to come and ask him ah are you the one or we should look for another how how put yourself in that situation in fact yeah i'm just imagining how the bible already told us that the prophet was not is not accepted in his home his brothers and sisters took time you know before they actually understood who he was and then he now saw this one that you know was a spiritual leader and also his blood relative and accepted him and ah that was the breakthrough but then for some reason you know he's now doubting him like are you sure you're the one look at me now i'm in prison what are you doing jesus gave them an answer go and tell him what you see he didn't he didn't start proving himself and say ah uh-uh, don't you know what? no so as the servant your heart my heart should be ready for that be ready you're going to have series of betrayals you're going to have series of backstabs from the ones you love from the people who are even your spiritual leaders you are going to have that people you look up to but you know what just stay focused stay focused and keep serving the purpose of elohim amen then you need to guard it i need to guard it we know this we are taking the prayers and we are still taking the prayers by the grace of god guard it in proverbs 4 20 23 we know that guard it how do you guard it over and over again if you've been in the tribe for long or you are just joining you're welcome we are we always talk about guiding you know the eyes what we listen to consecrate yourself the music and all of that but as i was taking note of this the holy spirit said that she remind us of you know you're not you're not you're no longer on social media but sometimes maybe you just go there and then there's this what they call short reels you know or even comedy skits in fact even if you're not playing it it's it can even start playing and and already you are watching it be careful of that guard your heart guard it don't it's not every comedy skit you want to look at it's not every reel you want to open the news you can listen to the headlines don't don't dwell in the um in the body of it especially when you know the kind of heart you have as a servant <laughs> eh? be careful and then ask for jesus's searchlight ask him every day we finish we have been taught on this altar that at the end of the day you sit down you lay your head on your bed and you say lord king of kings how did we do today did i serve you well are you happy are you not happy you know and all of that because we are not asking the lamb who was slain let me read to us the person who we are reporting to john the beloved had a revelation of the king of kings of the jesus that that is resurrected now it was no more the jesus that he could lay his head on he could eat with and all of that the bible please you can open to revelations chapter 1 verse 13 from verse 13 we're going to i i need us to if you can read it at the same time please the new king new king james version this is the lord this is the king this is the master that we are reporting to every single day every in fact don't even wait till the night at, at each point at each point at each point that you are executing his his purpose revelation 1 verse 13 to 14 i'll read verse 13 to 14 first and then continue verse 15 to 18 and in the midst of the seven lamb stand one like the son of man clothed with a garment down to the feet 
and girded about the chest with golden band. His head and his hair eh, were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire. He, he, this, is, this is the resurrected Jesus. This is the king of glory. His eyes were like flame of fire. The, the Bible does not say, you know, it's a flame of fire. I know some people want to draw it and do all that. I say like. It's like. So you cannot even imagine what it will be when you really see it. But I want us to just take this picture and understand the master that we are servants to. That we need to present this, the work we have done every day before his eyes. Before his, the, the light from the fire in his eyes should search and correct us and guide us. Let's go on. His feet were like the fine brass, as if refined in a furnace. <laughs> and his face as the sound, his voice, sorry, as the sound of many waters. <laughs> it was not the same voice that we tell John the beloved, eh, this is the person that is going to betray me, you know. You remember when John was asking, who is it? Now, his voice was as the sound of many waters. Hallelujah. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp to edged sword, Hakalizamatai. And his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. He's, look, listen, he says, like, this is the way that John could express it all. This is the way that John could explain it in his own eyes. It was like the sun, because the Bible tells us that he shines brighter than the sun. Hallelujah. This is my master. This is your master. And this is what happened when John saw him. He says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. I, I fell at his feet as dead. This is the position we need to have at all times. When we know, when we remember who we are working for. We, you, you, you are not coming on the 10 hours marathon for me or for Sadamola or for Madam Amy Minister Yemi or for anybody who invited you here. You are coming because the King of Glory said you should come. You know that you need to serve him. You know you need to be rewired. You know, one of us, I think it's, I don't know who said it, that this is indeed a service. Yes, it's my sister again, Madam Romina. She said this is a service. So you are coming not because of anybody. You are coming because of the king of glory and because you know when all is said and done you and i will be eager to hear those words well done my good and faithful words servants now this is jesus's response to him obviously he was doing the work John was doing the work of his of, of, of the Lord. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. It says it even said, Amen. And I have the keys of hate and of death. This is Jesus' response to us anytime we come before him he tells us go on go on either you did well or you did not do well but by the grace of god we are here today to ensure that we get the good notes from him we get the pass mark for him, from him another thing quickly as my I, I think i have about five minutes please um we should have another posture we should have as the servant hand posture we should have as i have as a servant is thanksgiving and praise thanksgiving and praise come bless the lord all ye servants of the lord you see that in psalm 104 verse 1 and then the last but not the least is to store up the words of the creator king in our heart in my heart we need to store that up we need to know the, the job description without carrying it in a paper all around. When you are employed, with time, you are you, are, you have the, the instructions. You have everything in your head. You know how to do it to the, to the, to the, to the P. 
pleasing eyes or before the pleasing eyes of the master we see that scripture that supports that is in proverbs 4 you know where it says that you should incline our ear to his sayings keep our keep keep every keep our hearts with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life of life keep our hearts with all diligence i think that is in verse 23 keep our hearts keep thy heart oh servant of the cross keep your heart oh mercy oh mercy servant of the most high keep your heart with all diligence and in conclusion as you and i excel in strength and fire intensity as we go on marching on serving the lord doing his work on it not being lazy not being you know um redundant look you know what the holy spirit told me i i i, I just remember to mention is that even if you are taking a break even if you are resting because yes we, we should be like god the bible tells us that after god finished he took he rested on the seventh day when we look at that verse i wish we can go there when we look at that verse um what verse is it now boys in genesis chapter one the bible says that god sanctified that day and rested you see he did god did not just rest and you know he, he made it clean he sanctified it so even if we are taking a break we are relaxing we're saying okay i need to rest today i want to rest i want to watch a movie what kind of movie are you watching where are you going to have your spa treatment where are you going to have your barber's hair you know where are you going as you're going there know that <laughs> you are also serving as you are lying on your bed know that you are also serving the lord whatever you do as you excel and increase in fire intensity because of his grace on you you should just remember remember that at the end of the day you are a creature i am a creature in the hands of elohim i am a creature in his hands so i don't have that right to to become pompous to become a, a, a redundant or to be lazy i need to follow him all the days of my life all the days of my life and so this is the heart of a servant this is these are some of the things that we should look out for and my prayer today is that let his kingdom come the king that sent me that sent you that created me created you let his kingdom come let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven through through this vessel he created that should be our prayer all the time that should be your prayer all the time as he leads us on this journey because this is not our final destination we are going to report before him to hear those words well done my good and faithful servant So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for, for giving the grace to deliver your word. Lord, I ask that these words will take root down in my heart and in the heart of your servants. That, Lord, it will take root down and bring forth fruits to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.